Today we are fusing together three great flavours of America. These are our deep fried short rib beef mac and cheese balls and we're going to show you exactly how to make them. Our deep fried mac and cheese balls have got short rib in the middle and they're going to be amazing. Mm. To start with we need to cook off some macaroni pasta. Okay, so elbow yep. pasta, very Italian, we've got rapidly boiling salted water in here. Yep. Add that to the pan and cook it for about six or seven minutes. It's a small pasta and we don't want to overcook it because we're going to cook it again in the sauce and again in the fryer. And then we can move on to the cheese sauce. Every good cheese sauce needs bacon. Okay, it's there for flavour and it gives little specks of bacon throughout the mix. So, I think you've been in America too long. <laughs> well, this is our take on a classic American dish. So you're adding bacon? Why not? Okay, I can deal with that. So start off with a few knobs of butter, bacon into the pan. To that, we add flour. And if you can stir that in, you get a paste. Yep. We'll turn that down a little bit. As soon as the flour is equally combined, add in the milk, bit at a time. When it's no longer lumpy and it's boiling, add a bit more. And what we want is quite a thick cheese sauce, because later on we're going to cool it down and it needs to be thick enough for us to mould around our short rib. OK. I'm really liking the sound of this one. So that's our white sauce with bacon. Next up, the cheese. I guess kind of crucial in a mac and cheese. We've got strong flavoured cheese, a cheddar mm. and some parmesan. Whilst you're grating that, we're going to talk about mac and cheese. How American is mac and cheese? Actually very American. Explain. I, I shall. It was 1802 and God. Thomas Jefferson, who was yet to become President of the United States of America, was looking for a meal. He found a fantastic macaroni recipe and he brought that back to America, importing it along with some parmesan. That's very good. Where did you read that? Do you know, you just pick these things up um, on the World Wide Web over the years. <laughs> now check our pasta. Perfect. Al dente, a little bit of a bite. Dump all of our cheese into that sauce, ooh, ooh, ooh. stir it, we can even turn the heat off now. Cool. A little bit of salt and pepper. <laughs> the wrong end of the pepper grinder, Ben. Come on, keep up. And then stir the whole thing together. Now, mac and cheese, you can eat straight away just as it is, mm. or what we're going to do, put it on a tray, put it into the fridge to chill it down, and then we can come back to cold mac and cheese and form it around our short rib. Ooh. Okay, so all I've done is taken them, Season them, fried them off in a bit of bacon fat, and then braise them in water. So it's literally it's bacon right. fat, beef, water, a bit of salt and pepper. And you cook it for about two and a half hours and it until flat. it just falls apart. Now try some of that. Oh wow. That's good, that's good isn't it? Mm. Now this short rib is amazing, but you don't have to do this. You could do it with brisket, you could just buy some ready-made pastrami, mm. like a smoked cured beef and use that, chop it up. Anything you want works, it's just filling for our mac and cheese. Yes. So, one sheet of cling film. Okay. Grab our cold mac and cheese. Yep. Some we prepared earlier. Perfect. What we need to do, now it's really kind of sticky and stiff, pack it down into a disc about 10 centimetres across, put some of our short rib into the middle, and then because of the cling film, ah. it should all close in on each other. The same process you might use to get sausage meat around an egg in a scotch egg yep. or something like that. This is our version of typical American food and flavours, but if you think we're wrong, please let us know in the comment box below. Yes, if you've made macaroni cheese balls before, what have you put in the middle? Have you put anything in the middle? What else could you put in the middle? We are fully open to ideas. So we need to make maybe three or four of these, all exactly the same and then we begin to panne them. Panneing doesn't sound very American. It's French. So flour, egg and breadcrumb. The same thing you mm -hmm. do to a goujon or a fish finger. We can do exactly the same thing here. Cool. So flour, pass it through there. Yep. Some egg and then breadcrumbs. And to get the double crispness, we go back into egg and breadcrumb once more. Ooh. So it's a double dip. Let me remove this one from the egg to allow you to do that. That's one squelchy, big, big, big ball. Also, also looks like a softball <laughs> or a baseball, which Americans might know as well. Now, as you can see, these are absolutely huge. One of these is a portion on its own mm -hmm. with a bit of salad, fantastic main course. Now, transfer these to our fryer basket. Ooh. Three is going to be gonna come this more side than enough. Lovely. And then lower it down. And they need a good sort of six or seven minutes to cook all the way through. And every so often, just roll them so that they get golden all the way over. Beautiful. Look at that. Oh. Crispy, golden, huge mac and cheese balls. Wow. You can, you can, oh, they've just come out of hot oil, Ben. They're going yeah. to be hot. Best to use tongs at home. There we go. Three amazing 
mac and cheese balls with short ribs. Now, that's our version, but that's not to say it's the only version. We want to hear yours. Perhaps you can make it vegetarian, use a different pasta, a sauce, or a different filling. Let us know by commenting below. Sorted. That is really good, because you don't usually get crunchy mac and cheese. You can put a topping on it with breadcrumbs, but it's not the same. That is fantastic. That is the tenderest beef I think I've ever had. And the bacon just tops it off. That is so good.